this time, instead of using y equals an expression, now we're working on a new notation, which is f of x. Now, this type of notation is read as f of x, or you can also um, read it as function of x. So now we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. So we're going to set this aside for this particular lesson, but the concept is pretty much the same. Now, since the concept is pretty much the same as y equals 2x plus 3, given that it's the same as f of x equal to 2x plus 3, substitution method is also applicable to both notation. So when I say notation, it means just a different way of writing um, this particular um, term. So now we have y equals 2x plus 3, and we are asked to find the value of y given that x is equal to 5. We are familiar with this type of question because this is what we have been doing in basic algebra. So if x is equal to 5, substitute the value of 5 to x so that you can find y. So if x is 5, y is equal to 13 by substitution method. Now, in function operation, there's going to be a different um, way of writing this particular question. Now, same function or same equation, y equals 2x plus 3. Now I'm using f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. But this time, we are asked to find f of 2 f of negative 5 and f of 0. And in this case, since x is replaced by a number, what it means is you are going to replace the x's with 2 or with negative 5 or with 0 so you can simplify your function or you can evaluate your function. So for the first function, f of 2, simply substitute the value of 2 to x. So you have 2x plus 3, so now you have 2 times 2 plus 3, therefore f of 2 is equal to 7. And if we have f of negative 5, f of negative 5 is equal to negative 7. And f of 0, replace x by 0, is equal to 3. So this is now how we substitute in a new notation. So before, we're using y equals 2x plus 3, now we're using f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. But the process of substitution is pretty much the same. They just change how they write things. And I want you to be familiar with this new notation because you will see this often in Algebra 2. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. So now I have three functions over here. I have f of x, I have g of x, and I have h of x. And I'm going to use these three functions in my operations for my example. So for the first problem, I need to add f of x and g of x. So if you have f of x plus g of x, all you have to do is to use f of x, which is 3x plus 5, and add it up to g of x, which is x squared plus 1. So now you have 3x plus 5 plus x squared plus 1. This is now a familiar operation because you've seen this before. This is similar to a binomial added to another binomial or a polynomial plus another polynomial. So what you need to do is to add these two together by getting rid of the parentheses, and you'll have 3x plus 5 plus x squared plus 1. Combining like terms, and you'll have 3x plus 6 plus x squared. And just like polynomials, you need to change it in standard form. So the highest exponent comes first, and your constant will be your last term in your answer. So you have x squared plus 3x plus 6. And that's how you add function using the new notation that we're working on today. Now for number two, I'm going to have g of x minus h of x. So if we can add functions, we can certainly subtract functions. So g of x is x squared plus one, and h of x is negative x minus one. Subtracting them, we're going to use the rule that we did in polynomials, distribute your negative sign, and then proceed to addition. So this is easier way or this is an easier way on how to subtract two parentheses or two polynomials or two functions. So I have x squared plus 1 plus x plus 1. Getting rid of your parentheses and you'll have x squared plus 1 plus x plus 1 and combine like terms and in this case it's just the constant 1 and 1 that you can combine x squared and x cannot be added or subtracted together because they are not like terms. So you can just simplify it as x squared plus x plus 2. And that is g of x minus h of x. 
So I'm using the same set of functions. I have f of x, g of x, and h of x from the previous slide, and they have the same um, value. I have 3x plus 5 for f of x, g of x is x squared plus 1, and h of x is equal to negative x minus 1. On my third example, I need to add f of 2 plus g of 3. Now the difference between this example from the previous example is now I'm not just working on x. I am working on a specific value of x, which is 2 and 3 for f and g, respectively. So to solve this type of problem, you need to evaluate f of 2 first, and then evaluate g of 3, and then you add them up. So for f of 2, I'm using f of x is equal to 3x plus 5, and 2, or x, will be changed into 2, so I'll have 3 times 2 plus 5, which gives me 11. So now I know that f of 2 is equal to 11, I just need to find the value of g of 3 using my function x squared plus 1. So I have g of 3 is equal to 3 squared plus 1 using the function of g of x, and I have g of 3 equals 10. So now that I have f of 2 and g of 3, all I have to do is to add them together because that's what's being asked of us, so 11 plus 10 is 21 you have h of 5 minus f of x. So we have a numerical value for x, but in this case, it's just f of x. So we just have to evaluate h of 5. So the function h of 5 is negative x minus 1. Replace x by 5, so you'll have negative 5 minus 1. So now you know that h of 5 is equal to negative 6. This is not yet your final answer because you still need to subtract it to f of x. So f of x is 3x plus 5. So I'm just going to put it down right here and subtract it from negative 6. So I have negative 6 minus 3x minus 5. Once again, I distributed my negative to 3x plus 5 and proceed to combining like terms. So therefore, h of 5 minus f of x is negative 3x minus 11. So the difference between number 3 and this one right here, number 4, let's change it, number 4, is that you are subtracting um, a specific numerical value for h and f of x. That's why your answer is just negative 3x minus 11, which is still uh, a polynomial. Now for my next example, which is example number five, I don't know how to count. Okay, so my example number five, I have f of x times h of x. So we are multiplying, so that means we need to call f of x, which is 3x plus five, and h of x, which is negative x minus one. Now I only have two binomials that I can multiply. So using my FOIL method, 3x times negative x is negative 3x squared. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. 5 times negative x, negative 5x. And 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And just like what we did before, just combining like terms, I can only combine the x's. So I have negative 3x squared minus 8x minus 5. So now let's have f of x is equal to x squared plus 3 and h of x equal to x minus 3. I'm using different functions and I'm going to evaluate different set of problems. In this case, I'm going to evaluate f of h of x. So the first letter is f, so I'm going to use x squared plus 3 and then replace all my x's by the letter h, which is h of x which is x minus 3. Now I have x minus 3 squared plus 3. Now before I continue, I just want to point out that the common error for most students when you're evaluating parentheses x minus 3 raised to 2 is they often distribute the exponent to 3 and to x. So don't make that mistake. x minus 3 parentheses squared means you need to multiply x minus 3 by itself two times. So I have here x minus 3 and x minus 3. So this one is how you simplify x minus 3 raised to 2. You need to FOIL it. So x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus 3 will give you this equation. So you have x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 plus 3. And then by combining like terms, f of h of x is simply x squared minus 6x plus 12. So this is my first um, question, or my first function that I need to simplify. The second functions or set of functions that I have is h of f of 0. So since h is my first letter, I have x minus 3, and I will replace all my x's by 
f, which is x squared plus 3. So I have x squared plus 3 right here, minus 3. It's not distributive property. You need to take note that when you have plus or minus in between a parentheses and another parentheses, or in this case, another term, all you have to do is to get rid of the parentheses. So you have x squared plus 3 minus 3. And then simplifying it, 3 minus 3 is 0. That's why I have x squared. However, the question is to find h of f of 0 and not h of f of x. So this one is not yet your final answer. You need to replace it with 0 to get h of f of 0. So h of f of 0 is equal to 0 squared, which gives us 0. So this is how you um, answer this question, h of f of 0, to further simplify it. And that's how you... Uh,